my main comment and question is with respect to the Arab revolutions. Um, as of, since last year, we watched with awe um, as this uh, momentous, uh, uh, you know, history was unfolding before our eyes. And we supported everyone's revolution, you know, because we believe in the free determination and human rights and the wish and will for the people to rule themselves and to live in freedom, whether it's in Egypt or Tunisia or Libya or Yemen or Bahrain. So with all of them, we respect them. But where I, I find it hard to understand, and I need you to help me uh, understand this, is with respect to Syria. Um, Press TV as well does not seem to be giving it the right coverage. And if anything, you'd expect it to have more focus, because the death toll is probably more than any of the other revolutions. And the same excuses that we hear were given by the same dictators in Egypt, in Tunisia, in Libya. But for some reason, when it comes to Syria, it's some other excuse. So this is what I'm finding very hard to understand. Okay, I'll do my best, uh, Mohammed, to explain it. The reason that the West and Israel are targeting the regime in Damascus, of which I have not ever been a supporter, I should add, is not because of the bad things about that regime. The regime in Damascus, of which I have not ever been a supporter, I should add. Mr. Galloway is just back from a trip to Syria during which he apparently praised President Assad as the last Arab ruler. He's on the line. Good morning, Mr. Galloway. Yes, good morning. Is that what you were doing, praising him? Uh, well, I was making a very long speech, but if you read the Israeli website from which you've drawn that, that's certainly the plum that they took out of the speech. But I don't have any problem uh, about repeating what I said about President Assad, that his reforming uh, zeal and his vision of Syria as a genuinely independent Arab country. Well, the fact is that Syria is ranked second lowest by the index of political freedom of all uh, countries in the world. I mean, that's hardly a, a record that one should well, praise, is it? That's, uh, that's absurd. That's absurd. Is it? Yes, yeah, absolutely absurd, yeah. What? Uh, and, and the fact that they do what they do, the Syrian regime does what it does, the fact that it uh, has a long record of arbitrary arrest, systematic torture, prolonged detention of suspects, all that sort of thing, unfair trials, well, is that all absurd? the regime in Damascus, of which I have not ever been a supporter, I should add. How can anyone who's a business partner of this regime show their face in a city like this and not content with it? Not content with it! Not content with it, he turns up in Damascus. The man's search for a tyrannical fatherland never ends. The Soviet Union's let him down. Albania's gone. The Red Army's out of Afghanistan and Czechoslovakia. The hunt persists. Saddam has been overthrown, and his criminal connections with him have been exposed. But on to the next, on the 30th of July. In Damascus, in Syria, appearing, I've given it all to you in a piece of paper, in front of Mr. Assad, whose death squads are cutting down the leaders of democracy in Lebanon, as this is going on, to tell the Syrian people they're fortunate to have such a leader. The slobbering Dauphin, who they got because he's the son of the slobbering tyrant who came before him. How anyone with a teacher of socialist principle can act or speak in this way is beyond me, and I hope, ladies and gentlemen, far beyond you and far beneath your contempt. Thank you.